Well, hello, this is Peter Combs from Bitamount.com and P.L. Combs Asian Art, located here in Gloucester, Massachusetts. And today is September 5th, 2018. And as I mentioned last week and the week before, um, as we posted them onto the site, there are some amazing auctions that are coming up uh, this, uh, this month, starting around September 11th, September 12th, in New York during Asia Week. And I wanted to start covering one of the sales in this video, and it's a sale at Bonhams. And it's about Japanese metalwork of the Meiji period, that incredibly fine uh, uh, work you see on occasion of, of bronzes and silver pieces inlaid with gold, meticulous workmanship. And the history behind this stuff is, is as interesting as the material itself. The catalog is titled Ancient Skills, New Worlds, okay? And it happens to fall on the 150th anniversary of the Meiji Restoration, which began in 1868 and ended in 1912. And and it was led by samurai reformists who were pushing aside the military government. They were fed up with the oppression. They felt it was very uneven and very unfair to the, to the rest of the population. And uh, there were 1.9 million samurai, so it was no easy thing to do. But they did do it. And it resulted in a lot of changes in the way the Gi Japanese government was run. And the first thing that happened, uh, one of the big first edicts, was that the uh, emperor uh, in 1870 uh, began, uh, uh, he basically announced that Shinto is now the national religion of, of Japan. And this had a very big impact in a lot of areas. And then 1872, we're getting into the world of art here, the Meiji government decided to spend 1% of the government's total budget to send Japanese works of art to Vienna for an exposition in 1873. It was also the same year, that uh, uh, 1872, that the government ended the stipends to the samurai classes as they were being eliminated, okay? They didn't want them around anymore. And uh, the uh, exposition in 1873 was so successful that uh, it was just absolutely amazing. All right, everybody loved the work that was sent there, and they decided this was the way to go. And during this time, the government, in a public-private partnership, formed a company called the Kiryu Kosho Kaisha, the Pioneering Craft and Commerce Company. All right, and it was headed up by a man named Suzuki Chokuchi. Uh, Chokochi, excuse me. I always trip on that. At any rate, he was a, a, a very talented metal artist. He began his own workshop at a very young age. He was about 18 when he started it. And he was appointed the head of the uh, Pioneering Craft and Commerce Company and uh, basically was their art director for, for, for quite some time. And he oversaw the work of nearly three dozen skilled metal workers. All right. The other thing that happened during this same time was that in 1876, a couple of years later, they ended the, um, uh, an edict was put out that was, was called the Sword Abolishment Edict, uh, or Haitori, and it was put out by the emperor, and it basically said the samurai could no longer walk around carrying two swords that was prohibited, except for very few, uh, very limited classes of, of leaders. They could still carry swords, but nobody else could. And what this ended up doing was putting out of work a lot of metal workers, a lot of very highly skilled metal workers who were used to making sword fittings for the 1.9 million samurai who no longer were going to be buying their fittings. And the question was, what do they do with them? Well, they became very fine metal artists. And they ended up going to work for, among other places, the Pioneering Craft and Commerce Company. And there were many other companies, OK? And, and what you're going to see now is the output of their, of their work when they went from making little tiny sword fittings to uh, very large objects, in some cases, of extraordinary quality, OK? And um, this is the catalog really quite exceptional. On the cover of this uh, massive bronze incense burner, as you can see, is a, is a winged pegasus, which was not part of normal uh, Japanese uh, art, but it was, a, it was a design that was brought in and adopted by the Japanese metal workers. Okay? And if we flip over here, we're going to come to some of the uh, uh, entries in the catalog. You can come to the bottom site and go through it. They're all here. All right? Or you can come over to our site and go to the uh, catalog section, and you can open up the catalog if you want. You can do it either way, all right? But here is just the 20 lots. But the 20 lots are really quite extraordinary. And we're going to start with the, this right here. This is a, a pair of uh, jars, uh, a big pair of jars. They measure, um, 
16 inches tall mixed metal and they're attributed to Suzuki uh, 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 Chakochi and uh, are just absolutely amazing. They were made during his under his tutelage at least. They know that much. They don't know if he made them directly or supervised the work. All right, but I urge you to come over and they are signed on the bottom by the factory. They have the factory mark on the bottom. And if you come over here, you can get a sense of just how fabulous this work was. Here you have sparrows and bamboo trees. And uh, there's all kinds of symbolism that appear on these pieces. And if you bring it up, the back, again, is a floral scene of this highly polished bronze work. And this stuff was an absolute sensation when it was sent to Europe for exhibition. And uh, they basically sold out. And a lot of the stuff ended up in major museums. This is one of the, one of the pairs of vases. They're estimated at fifty-five to sixty-five thousand dollars, which I know you're all used to seeing Chinese prices for high-quality things. The Japanese market is a, a lot friendlier. If these were, you know, if these were made in China, they'd be selling for millions probably. But at any rate, and uh, you're going to see pieces like this. This is a, an, an amazing uh, mixed metal work uh, plate. Um, made at the Mayo factory. Uh, there were different factories throughout. It wasn't just the, uh, the, the, the commerce company doing this. There were many factories that sprouted up, sprouted up that hired these out, basically out of work metal workers and put them to good use in creating absolutely beautiful things. And this is a plate that was done at one of them. And it's based on a print source of, uh, called the Strong Woman. All right, and there's a whole story about it, how she grabs a hold of this fellow and uh, takes him in and um, sort of, in, in a nutshell, gives him his Wheaties so he goes on to win a competition. But uh, it's an interesting, it's a pretty funny story. All right, and then you have pieces like this. This is an iron cabinet, and you've seen these before. You've seen them in Japanese lacquer. This is iron, all right, and it was done by, uh, by um, Otojiro, who was uh, an extremely talented uh, sword fitting maker, gold inlayer, and this is an iron cabinet inlaid with gold. All right, and the workmanship on this is just amazing. This is not a massive cabinet by any stretch. This is not uh, particularly huge, but the workmanship on it, let the screen clear up, there you go, is just amazing. The, the landscapes he was able to do in, in, in gold, uh, just uh, quite extraordinary, okay? And, um, here it is. It's estimated at twenty to thirty thousand dollars, and is uh, not terribly big. You have to bear this in mind. It's only uh, eight inches tall. This is a very small cabinet, but it's, the proportions and scale on it are just stupendous. It's a really beautiful thing. All right, and then there was this. This this piece is this pair of vases. Unfortunately, is unsigned, and uh, what it is is carp climbing up a waterfall. It's a Chinese uh, 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 decoration. It's a thing you typically see in Chinese paintings, but the Japanese did adopt it because it's so visually successful. All right, and if you if you blow this up. You can get right into it, and you can see how skilled this craftsman was to create the ridges and the lines in this bronze by carving and then inlaying it with silver and gold and creating the fish. All right, and there's a pair of them, and you can see the rocky edges of the stream here, or the rocky edges of the waterfall here. And then on the other side, you have this scene of, uh, it's a typical Japanese scene, actually. You see these fairly often in uh, Japanese paintings and on, on bronzes as well, is, is a sparrow flying through the, tr through the, through the plants, okay? But the, uh, the other side, I think, is a lot more interesting. And uh, this is a nice, nice large pair of vases. They're 13 inches tall. And they're estimated at twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. Okay, they don't know who made it, which which had, does have obvious impact on the uh, on the value. Uh, it was obviously done by someone highly skilled. And then on to this. This is a, a, a Michiharu um, a, a plaque, also based on a print source, and it shows a, a a young soldier blowing into a vertical. Basically, it's a pan flute that's held vertically. All right, and there's a, his signature. The artist's signature is on the back. And uh, just a wonderful looking wall plaque. This is really beautiful. Um, and it was produced at the, fu uh, the Fukudu, Fukata uh, factory. All right. It's estimated at twenty-five to $30,000. And it measures 25 by 14 inches. So it's pretty good size. And uh, just exceptional quality. It really is. All right. Um, and then this is, this, is one of, this is the cover lot of the catalog. Okay. And uh, it is a massive, uh, this is a 30 something inch, 34 inch tall bronze incense burner. And the architecture of it is very similar 
to uh, that that you see on the, uh, the roof, the roof lines of Shinto shrines, for example. And on top of it, they added, obviously, uh, a European or a foreign Pegasus, just as a great decorative element. They were not opposed to bringing in uh, decorations from, from other cultures if it worked on their art. They would, they would certainly do that. And uh, here you see it, okay? You see, the, you see these little rue heads up here, which is sort of a Chinese thing, and these, these wave borders that you see on the uh, foot rims of, of Chinese and Japanese porcelains fairly often and bronzes. And this particular design was given to them. There's, they have illustrations of it here. Uh, was provided to them by the uh, by the by the government for, uh, by government artists who basically suggested this as a as, a, as something they might want to make. All right, and it was made again. This was was made by the Pioneering Craft and Commerce Company, and um, they don't know if. Uh, 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 Chokichi uh, made this himself. Okay, uh, they certainly think he had a hand in it. And um, we're gonna uh, hold on. I want to take a look at one of the. Yeah, it says that Chokichi. They don't know whether he made this or not. I wanted to double check that, uh, but they believe he absolutely was an overseer of its production. All right, and there were there were a lot of designers and workers in his workshop, and it may have also been uh, one of a massive group effort, and they just didn't. Uh, put a signature on it of any particular worker. But this is a hell of a thing. And uh, it's estimated at 70, uh, 90 to $120,000. And as I said, this is a big thing. It's 34 inches tall. It's quite something, really quite something. All right, but come and look at these, and um, uh, you know it's it's good to see what the, the Japanese are doing because right now the Japanese art market is such a soft market. Even for the, these are world class objects, and they can be bought uh, relatively reasonably. All right, and here is a, um, another one that was done. Um, uh, by Morikachi, and uh, this is a, another one of these am amazing inlaid things. It, it shows the uh, Sensei Takai on one side, and then his uh, sort of mirror, his alter, alter ego, alternate self as a, as a descending goose. And there's a whole story about this particular immortal. He was one of the eight immortals, and the story illustrates it. And you, you can come, they'll explain the story to you, and it makes it very interesting. Here's the signature on the bottom, all right? And this is a lovely vase. It's estimated at thirty to forty thousand dollars, and it is sixteen inches tall. So it's a big vase. It's an elegant thing, and all of these pieces are coming out of one collection. This is the really fabulous thing. And collections like this don't turn up very often. All right, and then on to this. This is a Taikan piece. Um, these these the Taikan was uh, worked at the Okawa factory, and they uh, did all kinds of work. And their 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 decoration is obviously stylistically more simple, um, uh, 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 more restrained, okay, but extremely elegant. And this is an incense burner. And uh, if you look at it, you say, well, where does the smoke come out? Well, this is really fascinating. If you if you've click over here, if we can get the page to load, there it is. Um, I'm going to blow this up, okay. Hold on, there it is. It's the waves that are being pushed ahead. The artist used the waves that are being pushed ahead by the swimming uh, wood duck to create these slits, which would then allow the smoke to emit out, okay? And uh, this is estimated at twenty-five to thirty thousand dollars. It is signed. It's really quite a thing, and uh, the size on it is about five inches, which is exactly about what you'd expect it to be. But stupendous workmanship again. All right, and then on to this. This is a uh, a piece that was done in the Hamano workshop by Masayoshi. Okay, and this is really something, and it and it depicts uh, a samurai um, in in full garb and full presentation garb, in this beautifully done bronze inlaid with gold and silver, it's just extraordinary. Masayoshi was uh, famous for extremely fine work, and the Hamano workshop was another one of these places that was established after the edict went through uh, for doing this kind of work. I think they may have also done sword fittings before this, and then gone on to to do other other art forms, okay? And on the other side of it, you see the blackbird against the moon. Very, very common, uh, very well-known uh, piece of uh, uh, Chinese, uh, Japanese decoration. But the work on this thing is just stupendous. And I love the handle. I love the way that the artist shaped this this handle, all right? And this is estimated at sixty to eighty thousand uh, dollars, and I don't think that's crazy. And it measures. This is also a small one. Is that yeah, five inches tall. Okay, pretty small, pretty little, but uh, absolutely superb quality. Again, um, and this was uh, um, 
done in the latter part of the Meiji uh, Restoration, okay? And then on to this. This is a, 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 so a pair of ducks that were done at the, by t uh, t Takachika in, at the Sono factory. And uh, ducks and birds were very popular. And part of it is because the fellow we spoke to, uh, about at the very beginning, Mr. Chikochi, um, did a set of a dozen of these uh, big ducks for an exhibition and they became quite fashionable and other artists began making them um, from what I remember of all this. At any rate, this was a pair that was done by uh, Taka Chika and uh, beautifully, beautifully done. One is obviously up on its up on its legs pushing and the other one is watching and um, they are estimated at twenty five to thirty five thousand dollars and these are silver. These aren't silver over bronze. These are made of solid silver. They had some extraordinarily talented silversmiths and then the gilded feet okay and the pair of birds are again small six inches tall they did include a copy of the signature okay some nice nice script on there and uh, we'll see how they do and then we're getting sort of towards the end here but I wanted to sh show you this this is uh, this is a, a, a piece by uh, Tomonobu again um, with the with uh, birds this is the uh, the hawk and this was done around the same time as the pair we saw before um, again following on the heels of, of earlier work some a few pieces of earlier work but unbelievably high quality and what's really fascinating about this it retains its original stand which is is, is quite excellent it's it's estimated at 100 to 120 $25,000 and it's a mixed metal and it's on its lacquer stand with its red gold uh, thread um, um, just absolutely beautiful and uh, we'll see how that does and the size on this was it was a pretty good size yeah it was over two feet tall 24 inches tall and uh, again it was in this uh, one particular collection all right, and the last piece I want to show are these. These, these are uh, absolutely amazing. These are by uh, uh, Suzuki uh, Chikochi, and um, I want to pull these up. Here they are. And these are really great looking uh, arts and crafts uh, style sort of vases. They, they have a very Western look to them in many ways. They look like, almost like stuff you'd see that was made in France at the time. But the patina of the bronzes, the, the, the two bronzes and the uh, incredible quality of the decoration will blow this up a little bit and you can get a good look at it, is just absolutely stupendous. And again, he, he was the uh, basically the artistic director of the uh, crafts and uh, commerce company uh, factory, and this was the kind of work he was capable of. He probably worked with other artists on it, but he signed it, which means he did the bulk of the work. All right, and he certainly uh, um, just uh, demonstrates with these little elements here, these pendants dripping down, just how good he was. And on these really elegant, spectacular uh, uh, chimera stands with the tails going up and the heads coming around, um, taken again uh, probably from a Chinese source, but just beautiful quality all the way down and up. All right, and here's a, here's a picture of the top of it. Uh, we can blow this up a little, hold on there. And uh, you can see the absolutely superb casting here, just precision. And the patination, the way they patinated their bronzes was perfect. And uh, this pair is estimated at 175 to $225,000, okay? But these are big. These, these things are 35 inches tall. They're three feet tall each, okay? That's a heck of a thing. And uh, I hope you come over and read the catalog and go through it um, and, and read the notes. There's copious notes in the catalog about who the artists were, how they came to be there. Uh, it mentions a lot, it gives a lot of information on what they did as sword makers and where they worked and how they came to, uh, to be involved in this artistic movement, which, as I said, was a, a joint venture between the Japanese government and a private industry to, uh, to build demand and interest in the, in the skilled work of Japanese craftsmen, okay? And I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll be putting up the videos for the other sales coming up, but check the bottom sale out. It's a good one, all right? Have a great day, and uh, we'll see you all next time. All right, and if you haven't subscribed yet here on YouTube, please do. And if you oh, if you like the video on Japanese uh, stuff, let me know, and we'll do more of it. I, I, I never know how much, how much interest the, uh, some of our viewers have for Japanese work. I like it a lot. I collect some of this stuff. So um, if, you, if you have an interest in it and you, and you like this a lot, make a comment and um, uh, subscribe here, okay? And uh, thanks a lot. See you all next time. Bye-bye.